this video, I'm going to be talking about training and why it really is not enough just to go to training. Uh, so a lot of people will go out there and they'll get an eight hour training course and I'm sorry, but there is not enough out there. And I could spend hours on this video. I could do a live feed for like two hours and try to talk to you and put things in certain ways that will hopefully get through to you that you cannot stop at that eight hour course or just go into courses or whatever. Uh, there is more you need to do and there's a lot of work to do on your own, but there's a lot of things you need to do in that training course in order or any training course you go to in order to get the most out of it. And in order to get to kind of grease that groove a little bit to where you're actually learning faster. Because the, prob the problem, excuse me, the problem we're dealing with is you have an instructor or instructors that are trying to transfer skills, physical skills, hard and soft skills to you. A soft being mostly mental and hard skills being, you know, physical. They're trying to transfer both hard and soft skills. You know, soft skills being like situational awareness uh, and analysis of the things that you're doing physically. Uh, physical skills being handling that firearm and manipulating it in a way that it does what you want it to do. So they're trying to transfer those skills in an eight-hour period, and there might be a, a two-day, eight-hour, a two-day period of a total of sixteen hours. That's cool and all, but it's impossible for the brain to actually retain that information uh, if your body is not constantly exposed to those physical skills and uh, those hard and soft skills. If those hard and soft skills are not being practice daily even a little bit that is going to become very perishable and it will atrophy to the point of being relatively non-existent it doesn't necessarily purge all the way uh, if it was even grasped a little bit by your brain now when it statistically when it comes to physical skills you're only going to be really capable of retaining three or starting the process of retention for three skills Per day. Now, I would say that it would be three skills for every two days because realistically, whenever you do a skill, you want to give it 24 hours to bake in your brain or to rest. If you've ever baked, you know that you need to go through the bake period and then you need to give it a rest period. Uh, so, or if you've ever cooked like a, a steak or whatever, there is a, a rest period where the inside should still be able to cook. You just can take it off the fire, so to speak. Uh, the same thing goes for your brain. Now, when it comes to declarative stuff, where I'm just sitting here talking to you, we can retain more of that information, probably double that, maybe a little bit more, depending on the person and your attention level and how you emotionally connected with that information. So, a training in anything, it's almost impossible to take anything and just throw um eight hours at anything and expect that somebody's going to be proficient for the rest of their life. And unfortunately, firearms training courses are the only courses I know of where people are almost going there thinking that they're being promised lifelong skills or lifelong skill development just from an eight hour commitment or maybe two eight out of eight hour commitments because they go to the class for, you know, a two day class or whatever. Uh, so where it's a Saturday and Sunday class or a Friday and Saturday, whatever the case may be, you come back one, uh, two days in a row uh, for eight hours a day, maybe more. So unfortunately, that's not how it works. It's just like martial arts. Martial arts is a very uh, technique driven uh, sport. Uh, shooting is as well. But I would I would say that shooting is a more fine uh, physical skill. Uh, so it, so martial arts can combine uh, brute and fine uh, fine tuned movements and stuff like that, strikes and pressures, positions and stuff like that, like I talked about in my grip video. But shooting is going to combine a lot of that stuff where you're going to have a lot of isometric holds you're going to be doing. You can have very fast and precise movements. Think about when somebody is is drawing from the holster, they need to go exactly where they're wanting to point, and then they need to do a fine motor skill of pulling the trigger without moving the gun. So that if you're on and you're pulling the trigger 
and the gun moves in that time that you set the gun off, you just ruined it. All right, you just ruined that precise shot. Uh, so, and de depending on the range, you could be held liable for that miss. Uh, so, criminally and civilly. So, uh, that's the real world, you know, of using a firearm in self defense is everything has a criminal and civil liability attached to it. And so, the saying that there's a lawyer behind every bullet, I mean, not every situation is always the same, but you cannot go into firearms ownership and think that it is the hammer and everything else is a nail. Unfortunately, there's a lot of people that get them and never get training, and they tend to be the type of folk who think that uh, everything is a nail and the gun is their hammer. Like, everything can be solved for it. it can be used, they think it can be used for intimidation purposes. They think they can do warning shots. They think... A lot of things that are just not true. So, uh, I cannot resolve all those issues. I cannot give you legal advice. I wouldn't dare to say that I know enough about your laws or even laws in general to be an advisor. That's what lawyers are for. They can be the ones that can, you know, tell you that. But what I can say is when it comes to training, you cannot stop at that eight-hour course. Now, before I start beating a dead horse, which I probably already have after, you know, five minutes, um, what can you do? <clears throat> okay, so what you can do is that when you go to these courses, you need to go to courses, but you, uh, there's stuff to do at the course, before the course, and after the course. Before the course, prep yourself for the course. Try to look up YouTube videos, free material that's going to talk about that stuff. Get a visual reference for what you are going to be encountering. YouTube has a lot of videos on the basics of firearms training. Watch those videos and listen to some of the stuff they're talking about, like the grip, uh, recoil, follow through, and stuff like that. Go do some, uh, watch some videos on YouTube and uh, get yourself a little bit familiar with that stuff. And then when you go to class, hopefully a lot of that material will be familiar to you and it'll help you retain a little bit more of that information and focus more on those hard skills, all right? So uh, at the course, I recommend that you take notes, whether it be written. I, re I like written because I don't need a battery in order to retain it. Uh, I just need to put it in an area where I can get to it, right? Uh, there are some instructors uh, that, I've, uh, that I've worked with where they actually have printouts of almost everything they're going to teach, but you still would need to put notes in for individual notes for yourself. Like if you notice you have a problem with stance, uh, maybe you just need to emphasize um, a shoulder, a check, foot spacing, check, you know, uh, you know, left foot forward or, or whatever it is. If you're left-handed, right foot forward and stuff like that. You want to put in your individual notes. The reason is you can recall it to that day when you're in the training course, but a lot of times people will immediately forget it the next day because our brain is going to purge unnecessary information and you have just been given a fire hose of information and it's going to be really hard to... to uh, just absorb and keep it. It's impossible to keep it all. So you need to record it. And even if you have to get to the point of taking pictures or having people take pictures of you in that proper position, you could ask a fellow student or better yet, the instructor. Uh, they'll probably have a better idea of what angles to use in those pictures and give you advice on how to get back into this right stance, grip, you know, whatever. Uh, so uh, use the tools you have available there. Uh, video, pictures, written notes, etc. So, uh, also, uh, try to uh, be a good participant and uh, to listen to the instructor, not go too far, not, uh, not try to get ahead of the instructor or get too excited, just follow along. But also, one of the other things that I find is very valuable is also watch the other students. We can learn a lot by observing the mistakes and the successes of others. Uh, see what they're doing that's getting them results. And, you know, focus on yourself, of course. Uh, don't try to, you know, be the coach, uh, the first day coach there. 
um, enjoy your time as a student, but use them as an opportunity to learn as well. Watch what they're doing and see if it actually works. You know, if they're applying what the instructor's telling them, then maybe uh, afterwards or during a break, pick their brain a little bit. Like, how is this working for you? Is there some way that you got this, you know, you understood this? Of course, when you're on break, uh, you don't be, don't be messing with the weapons unless the instructor is okay and they're allowing you to go down range with empty firearms to kind of work on some of this information. But hopefully you'll have, you know, instructor guidance along the way. Or you can pick the brain of the instructor on, on skills you're having problems with during breaks or something. Uh, so anyways, that's just a few things you can do uh, while you're at the range. Okay? Uh, and when you're... Uh, back from the range, when you leave the range, there's a few things that you could even get right now. There's a there's a few accessories that you can get and a few things that you can do. Uh, now, the things that you can do need to wait until after training, all right? So, <clears throat> uh, remember I, uh, I said that, uh, you know, you're going to want to write a lot of things down. Well, one of the things that you're going to want to write down is the different what's called courses of fire. So the instructor might tell you, okay, one round, I want you to touch the trigger and press. I want you to record things like that because those are called drills. You extend out, touch the trigger, don't pull it, but and until you're told press and press the trigger. That's one of the drills that they, they have uh, people doing in some courses. It's a very simple one, but those are called drills. That way you can practice those things at home. And once you get home, you need to have certain pieces of gear that will set you up for success. Number one, you need to uh, have, you know, either a printout of all the firearm safety rules and be able to follow them, and uh, or you need to have them written down verbatim and go through them. The proper unloading and loading procedures need to be um, practiced with, not with live ammunition, but with things called snap caps. Now, this is the first investment you're going to need to make. You're going to want to get snap caps like this. This is an A-zoom. This is a rimless A-zoom. This is meant specifically so you can uh, dry fire, so you can pull the trigger safely, and not only safely for you and everybody else, um, but also for the firearm, so you do not break a firing pin after uh, dry firing it too many times. It's got a little rubber butt to absorb the impact of the firing pin, so it doesn't damage it. Uh, so that's the first investment that you're going to want to make. Now, the uh, second investment is a laser. So I have a laser inside this firearm. This is a laser from G-Sight. Uh, just G and S-I-G-H-T. Just Google that and it'll bring you to their uh, website. But this is called the E-L-M-S. Uh, it, it's an acronym or it's uh, just, you know, letters put together. It's, so... Uh, that it actually uh, spells out, you know, what this is. Uh, so uh, this thing mechanically aligns itself with the bore, and it has a rubberized butt. And the the current ones actually have these that are replaceable, and uh, they give you a few in the kit. But it's designed the same as a snap cap, but it emits a laser that is mechanically aligned with the bore, the inside of the barrel. So it'll show you relatively uh, accurately where your firearm is going to hit. So if you dry fired a lot with snap caps and you notice that there's no movement in your sights, no movement in the gun while you're pulling the trigger, the laser will not lie to you. So it'll show you if you're moving while pulling the trigger. So there's just a few things that you can get that will set you up for success. And the next thing is those things cost money, right? The next thing you're going to have to have is time. You're going to have to invest some time in this. And you can invest as little as five minutes a day. You can invest as much as, you know, an hour. But I recommend keeping it somewhere in the middle. Uh, invest, you know, 20 minutes to a half hour, maybe 40 minutes. Because over that amount of time, you can start wearing on your brain. Especially if you're refining skills. But the more experience you get, the more immersed you've been in this world of firearms, the more you'll be able to spend time doing it. The more it'll be fun. The more it's going to uh, help you and stuff. And the more you're going to retain over time. So 
Uh, with all that said, that's my uh, that's my advice and my point of view on training. Uh, there's a few things you need to do before, during, and after a training course. And the biggest thing is spend time practicing, not not just going to the range. Range time is not practice. It's verification of acquired skills that you uh, develop during dry fire. So go into those classes. Think of it as a primer. It, it gives you an idea of where you need to be. It shows you what right feels like. But after you leave the range, it is time for you to spend the time uh, investing in yourself and practicing dry. And then uh, using the range only to do verification of an acquired skill. So when that laser is not moving anymore and you are very confident that you can get your firearm deployed very fast and you know maybe moving or whatever and that laser is still not moving off target, then go to the range and verify with live ammo that you're able to put the rounds exactly where they need to go under recoil with that bang and everything else. So. I, I apologize that this was such a long video, but I felt it was necessary to cover all these different subjects as it pertains to training, because there is a lot to talk about. I could do this for hours, but anyways, I appreciate you guys watching. Let me know what you think about this in the comment below, or in the comment section below, and you guys have a good one.